Okay, thanks for joining everybody. Plenty of room at the front, for anyone at the back. Obviously it's a full sell out here. Hi, uh, my name is Gary Beno from Digital Space. We're down at T Stand 37, just down the road. So happy hour. We've got plenty of beer on the stand. Come and say after, come and meet the team. So uh, obviously the, the title of the uh, fireside chat today is uh, Journey to the Cloud. Uh, we've got a customer here, Flagship Group, and also joined by Simone Yu from AWS. So first of all, I want to introduce you the uh, people we've got. Uh, Andy Lingley, who's the IT director of. I've just promoted him, sorry. Uh, head of IT. Yeah. We've got Laura Brown, who will let you announce himself. <laughs> and Laura Brown, director of information security flagship. Which is quite topical at the minute, isn't it, Laurie? With the, yes, yeah. had the news in the uh, last week. And then over to Simone, you can provide him here. I'm Scott Kim, I'm head of the UK Network Office business here at Amazon Web Services. Brilliant. So, First of all, let's we go on and let's tell you a little bit of background. So, digital space, we do secure connected cloud. We're an AWS partner. We also do connectivity, so we do SD WAN for organizations, and also from a cyber security perspective, we also help organizations there. We're a, a partner, have been for over 12 years with AWS. It's been a great relationship so far, and obviously we work jointly on helping flagship move to the cloud. What we're going to do is all of it. Uh, Laurie, if you could tell us a bit about Flagship, because I think it's really good to give context. Yep. Um, so yeah, we're a Flagship group. We've got 30,000 properties in the east of Anglia, in the east of England. Um, we, we have to have uh, a local impact, so we've split ourselves into three housing associations, Sunfly and New Tide and Victory. Um, we've also got our repairs and maintenance in-house, gas service in-house, um, housing development, and also hopes to our um, homeless charity as well. So quite, um, quite a lot of areas in the housing sector. Sorry. So what, what I think we should do is we talk about the journey to the cloud. So I think firstly, I think it'd be great if Andy, you could give us a bit of a feel for what that journey was. And then we're going to expand on that. And I've got a bit of agenda, which would be helpful. So we're going to cover some of the key things around that. So the, the, the obviously the fact that it's important to have one team in that journey. And we're going to go through very these things all the way through. So it'd be great. There's going to be some great topics to talk about now. So, yeah, Andy, give us a feel for, yeah. for what that journey was like. Yeah, so like a lot of organisations, um, the start of Journey for us was really that discovery piece, um, trying to understand what we've got there in the marketplace. Um, and I have to say from a personal point of view, I went from being cloud sceptic in terms of cloud expenses, what can we do on cloud that we can't do on premise. And through that discovery piece, um, I did essentially a complete 180 on that into actually I then become sort of very cloud enthusiastic. Um, we then chose AWS as our cloud partner, uh, Digital Space as our um, sort of our deployment partner uh, to, to take that forward. And then November 2020, we were then subject to a cyber cyber attack, which um, we were right on the cusp of starting that. Yeah, it wasn't literally journey, a day, wasn't it? We stopped the project. Yeah. And, um, we were then left with the decision, do we rebuild on premise and put that cloud journey on hold? Or do we just accelerate as we've, we've been through the, the discovery process with you guys, haven't we? We've got a, we've got a full, um, a full view and, um, and sort of roadmap of how to get there as well. So we then made the decision that actually we will just go for it and we will, we will migrate into AWS. Yes, we went, obviously we had workloads, we yep. a number of applications, and also from the telephony end as well. Yep, so we moved uh, workloads across, I think, 120 servers we are we were on premise. Um, we brought that down to 70 through the consolidation that we did through, through the migration process. Um, the cyber tank took out our contact centre, so we were able to use um, digital space to stand up Amazon Connect, which is Amazon's contact centre solution. Um, within, I think, three days, we had five contact centers up and running um, with basic functionality, but the most important bit was we could, we could serve our customers. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Laurie, I mean, one of the things that you, you'd already decided that you wanted to move to the cloud, but, you know, what drove the decision would be really useful to share that with the audience? Um, yeah, definitely. So um, this was probably a couple of years even before we started, um, before we started moving to the cloud in, um, in anger. Um, I suppose there was push and pull factors. We knew that all our on-premise equipment was coming end, end of life in the next year or two. So we needed we needed to make a decision. Are we going to do a big capital investment and replace all that hardware? Or do we look at a more operational model? 
Um, the more we looked into it, the cloud looked more and more attractive. Um, as Andy said, I think initially, maybe a few years before that, we were a little bit skept skeptical. We really started to see the benefits of the cloud. Um, main things were the um, um, agility and capacity for change. So on premise, I think you're little, um, you've only got a distinct amount of um, capacity. It's expensive to expand that and it's not very quick. In the cloud, we knew we wanted to um, the option to do things quickly. Flagship's very keen on doing new things, lots of change, potentially um, growing quickly as well, and the cloud is just going to be ideal for us. So we went through, um, touching a little bit on what Andy's already talked about, but we went through an extensive procurement process, not just the procurement process to keep us in line with regulation, we literally went out to the marketplace, what's out there. Um, we already heavily invested in Microsoft in terms of Office 365, Windows Server, things like that, like most of you are. Um, so it could easily have been a natural choice to go to um, Azure. That seemed the next natural step, but we went out to the marketplace, spoke to everybody, and there's loads of technical reasons that you can put Andy on later if you need to, but <laughs> there, um, yeah, I'll let you, I'll put you in the us there. Um, but the main thing we found is the partnership work in the digital space and AWS offered. It was the, have they got a similar culture? Can they work with us? But this is going to be one of the biggest things we ever do as an organisation. We need somebody that can work with us, and that's what we found with um, AWS and digital space. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, Andy, I think you know, one of the things that you said really along, you know, you wanted to someone to work with you rather than do it yeah. to you, which I think is a really common way organisations approach that migration. I mean, it's also that, that long-term partnership as well. It's not, you know, we want someone to come in and um, drop a solution on us and then walk away because, yeah. you know, cloud is a constantly evolving, it's a constantly evolving thing. So you need that partner that can, that can still help you along that journey. I think, Simone, you had a really good comment when you first met the CEO. Yeah, so when I first met the CEO, David McQuaid, and trundled up to, to Norfolk. I've never, I think I've been there once before. Anyway, trundled up there and... I met uh, Dave and the director of IT and uh, Matt Brazier and I thought we had a really good first meeting and you know got sponsorship for the next meeting and because I'd never heard of AWS before to be the you know, flagship it was a new, very new partnership first time we'd ever met and uh, and then just as we were sort of getting the actions uh, Dave then turned around to Matt and went so this all sounds amazing sounds great but you think you can work with this woman and her organization and i was just like oh okay uh, but but actually the reason i tell that story is because technology is a massive part we have the breadth and depth of capability we can do everything from a security perspective from a technology perspective but the points that have already been raised it's also about culture cultural alignment can you work together can you earn that trust can you align can you work in partnership and I think you know, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that the, the work that Digital Space have done and you know, really executing very, very quickly, really earning that trust and keeping that trust. You know, as they say, trust is really hard to earn and it's really easy to lose. So you know, this is a, a, a strong partnership and I think we're going from strength to strength. But do not underestimate culture when you're making decisions, I guess, as a people. Yeah. I think talking about working together, obviously we mentioned the backdrop of the, the side of yeah. the cybersecurity issue. Pretty much, we work together. I think on yeah, stand-ups yeah. once a day for three months from that November to, to Christmas, didn't we? So yeah, it was that constantly evolving discussion in terms of you know, what does the business need at any particular time. Um, we went through like Gary says, daily stand-ups, just half an hour every every morning to work out what had been done the day before. What is what do we need to get done on, on that particular day? Um, but then as business things change as well, it was it was a very agile project in the way it was delivered. So as the business changed, we could drop focus on one particular area and focus on something else for a couple of days to, to deliver that, that particular piece of the service that the business needed. So conscious we talked a lot about technology, but I think what's really important is what you've got to deliver for your tenants and also your your, 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 your customers and in your staff. So we're really useful to, you know, what benefits do you think you've got, have you gained for, for, for those? I think in some ways, not all, but in some ways I think benefits are a little bit unseen by the customer because what we're delivering is IT services to the organisation. Um, what it gives us is um, a huge ability to scale at need. Um, Amazon has got, not literally, but you know, to a certain extent, an unlimited pool of resource that we can pull on at any point in time. A um, good example is during the cyber attack recovery, we, uh, within a couple of days, deployed 800 workspaces, uh, which is 
basically desktop in the cloud, a completely secure desktop environment to get our, our users, our, our, um, our colleagues back onto the systems to be able to, to, be able to start serving our, our customers' needs, um, which we, we simply couldn't have done on premise. We just don't have that spare capacity to be able to do that. But alongside that, you've got the other things around security, which is obviously very important at the minute, especially with, with what's going on in the world. Um, and these are some of the benefits the customers don't see, that ability to scale to support the business and the customers' needs as we need to, the security that we're able to label or to, to put around their, their data think, and their information. From memory of the other area, obviously, not every system could be brand new. We can never replace everything at the same time, so you might have a mix of SaaS solutions, some more legacy systems, you might finance, HR. I think one of the things we saw quite quickly, I think you saw quite quickly, was the actual performance you know, improved on some of those systems that we thought might be quite tricky to, to move in the first place. Yeah, has a management system as an example. We've got it running on a lower lower capacity server than we had running on premise. It runs with you know, at least half again better performance as we've had feedback from our users. Um, yeah, we've not really come across anything that we haven't been able to migrate or, or haven't been able to, to get working within the platform. Well, I suppose the other thing I'll jump in there, John, um, is I suppose the customers, um, the tenants, they don't really care what platform you're on, they don't care whether you're on premise or whether you're Azure or AWS. What it does do is it enables the IT to support our customers, which are the internal customers, to deliver their frontline service. So the customers don't care, but hopefully they notice the, the indirect benefit of having a, an efficient, scalable IT infrastructure. So, yeah, I don't think the customers would know if you asked them, but they've seen the benefit. Yeah. I think one of the things I think we're really keen to share, you know, hopefully this is an open conversation. One of the things I think is really useful is some of the lessons learned. You know, nothing's ever perfect, so it'd be yeah. really great to sort of share some of those sort of lessons that we've learned on the journey line. Yeah, I suppose the first lessons learned is um, don't get a cyber attack. But um, if you can um, put that to one side for now. Um, yeah, taking a step back, we had we spent months with you guys working out the six month plan. We, knew, we did loads of investigations into our estate, what service we've got, had a, a, an effective planned um, schedule of when to move servers with minimal impact to the customer, and what size servers do we need there for, what subscription model do we need. We had a really intensive six month plan which kind of went out the window on that um, on that Sunday when we had the cyber attack. It was was still a useful reference. I suppose the thing um, and the agility of you guys, work, your technical guys working with your technical guys was just brilliant. That just worked so well. But I suppose the point, the point we're trying to, I'm trying to get across is do whatever you can do to give yourself time. Um, you can do all the planning in the world, but don't wait for an external factor to make you do it, like a contract end date or a, an, an arbitrary target in the future to get it done by. Give yourself the time to do it. Um, we were in a different situation. If it had gone a fund, we would have had six months to do it in an orderly fashion. So in our experience at the time, I mean, it was the right thing to do because we, we got the services back online as quickly as we ever, ever would done in any, in any other scenario. It did mean costs were a bit higher than expected. Um, but they wouldn't have been, that was the right thing to do at the time. We took the decision to increase the costs, get online as quickly as possible and get our customer services back online. Um, with that plan and with enough time, you can um, do it in a coherent fashion and really minimise costs. Yeah, I think just again, we went Sorry, through... Guys, just depending on what, uh, what the point you made there about um, you know, how it makes it very easy to try stuff. So you basically pay for what you use while you're using it, and then you can switch it off. So we did a couple of pilots where we put our house management system into AWS to just kind of gauge what the performance was. It doesn't work on there. It costs us about £50 for about three days' worth of work. Um, so those proof of concepts can be really quite cost-effective to do. I suppose that's the old place if you're going to fail, fail fast. Yep. So you try, yeah. you try it quickly. You understand what you want out of it. If it doesn't work, great, close it down and start again, do something new. Yeah. Is that what I was going to say? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing, we talked about the plan, but what we worked with you on, remembering how we've iterated since then, this is, you know, is actually getting under the bonnet of that information. You know, we can actually put, you know, things on your applications or your data center to get that information back to then work out what that journey looks like. So, you know, you're going to have your CEO going, well, how much has got to be go there? Well, actually, we can do that. And one of the things that we want to talk to, you, you know, come and see us on the stand, because we're actually doing that for customers now, you know, free of charge service to literally get under the bonnet 
and work out what's the size of the problem. Yeah, that, that was part of our discussion. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the big parts of Gauss is actually understanding how much it's going to cost to um, to deploy on cloud. So um, we used an AWS product called TCO Logic. You basically put a small virtual machine into your environment. It looks at um, what your servers are doing through your workloads. You leave it running for typically a month, so you get the full kind of peaks and troughs through the um, through the months of use. Um, and it provides a whole load of data at the end of it, which then gives you a, the ability to start kind of working out what does this server look like in AWS and how big does it need to be, and then what's that going to cost us month think, for month. I think it's really important to, you mentioned cost earlier. I don't know, moving on from a, in your, the way you moved was obviously yeah. different. I know we had the workspaces, etc. we had to spin up. So, you know, compared to your previous on premises, to, you know, CapEx, CapEx, OpEx, the different ways you approach things, you know, how are things improved now? So I know we've been on that journey, and that journey continues on a daily, weekly basis with you. I'd um, be interested. In... From... Oh, Andy, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, part, part of my roles previously have been to uh, look after the hardware in our on premise data centers. And it's always a really difficult job when you get to the point of refresh to actually work out what you need to support the business over the next three, five years, depending on how long your, your hardware life cycle is. And very rarely you get it absolutely spot on. So if you've got more capacity than you need, you pay for stuff that you don't need. If you want to underspend the capacity, then you've then got to spend more money to, to add capacity to, to get your systems over to the point where you want to then actually refresh it. Um, the offense model you get on cloud, you pay for what you use, and, and that's how you build. And you've always got the capacity there if you, if you need it. If you're not using it, you're not paying for it. Obviously, as an AWS partner, we have been for 12 years. Part of our ethos is to reduce cost. So we continually work with you to continue to drive that cost down. It isn't about seeing it go off on a, on a you know, it literally is about looking at it monthly. We're literally trying to work with our FinOps team. How can we drive out cost? How can we improve things? So this is a continual process. Yeah, we had a meeting with one of your FinOps guys last week, literally just talking about you know, different places in the bill we might be able to save. And it's not always thousands of pounds every month, but sometimes you can save. Fifteen pounds here, thirty pounds here. That all makes a difference over the over the you know, over the cost over yeah. over a year, for example. I think one of the other things I think is really key is, is security resilience. We mentioned the backdrop here. We know what's in the press at the minute with Clarion and Friday. Quite serious there, and I really wish them the best in that because we know we've been, we've been on that journey. Yeah, we know. Yeah. You know um, that. So I think it's I think it'd be really good to, to sort of touch on this, glory You know, then they have had your systems on the cloud. You know, for more than a year now. You know. Do you feel more secure, you know, more resilient? Is it more resilient? It would be really good to, to share that with the audience. Yeah, definitely. The short answer is yes. Yeah, definitely feel more secure. It makes my job easier. Um, but the, the way I explain it to my sort of my um, my board is it's not cloud allows you to be more secure. It's not a silver bullet. If you moved into the cloud and didn't do it right, it wouldn't be secure like anything else. Um, AWS look after a lot of it because they look after the data centers and things like that, but you still control who has the keys and who you give the keys to. So, done right, it is more secure. Um, I know you guys followed AWS best yeah, practice yeah, to, get it in, to get it into the cloud, so we're in a good position already. Um, we also got independent security advisors in to do a um, complete um, security review, and now they're working closely with it again with you guys yeah. on them, just tightening up certain areas based on their advice and things like that. So. Um, yeah, definitely feel more secure in the cloud. Um, more resilience as well, yes, um, it's an easy answer. Um, one of the drives, which I forgot to mention initially, is we were suffering from a few power outages on our um, on-premise DCs. Um, our secondary DC was in a smaller town with um, basically not as good infrastructure. You remember those days when um, it felt like if it rained, somebody, somebody said they comment, why are you keeping your servers under a tarpaulin outside? Wasn't, wasn't very helpful, but that's the impression it had. But um, obviously, in the cloud, you don't have to worry about power and things like that. So, um, yeah, definitely more resilient. It's a kind of discouraging, isn't it? From, yeah. from just what AWS are, are able to provide against what you can provide as a, as a business yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And just on the security thing as well, you know, AWS gives you a whole raft of security tools um, from security groups, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, all the different services that they have on there. There's also a whole marketplace where you can use third-party products as well, uh, which we do to augment some of our security as well, because uh, yeah. you know, the possibilities are endless to, to a certain extent as to, to kind of how you define and build your infrastructure. I think from a digital space perspective, we also manage some quite large work, large workloads, department leveling up, because one of our customers has been for seven years. 
a procurement off, off G Clay with us, and obviously Mr. Gale coming tomorrow. We have to get him a mention on stage. But you know, this having that sort of large workloads, this trickles down to our customers. We can literally, you know, help customers evolve with that. So you know, that's as we continue. You know, it's, it's an ongoing saga. Switching gears slightly, and I think with Simone, I think Simone here, sustainability. I think I've been on this this show today, and the number of people that are coming up to me and talking about sustainability, you know, I think it's a really important topic and customers, not even customers, organisations I speak to, haven't got a clue what's going on in their data centres, can't measure it, can't monitor it, and if you can't measure and monitor it, how can you reduce it? So I think it'd be really, really interesting actually, you know, also Laurie and Simone, from both perspectives, yeah. if you could give me a view, you know, on what, what you're doing from a net, net zero perspective and also how AWS is also helping on that journey. <laughs> um, well, we're very committed to sustainability um, as Amazon and AWS's overall, overall organisation. In 2019, Amazon actually co-founded the Climate Pledge, um, which was to committing to be carbon zero by 2040, which is actually 10 years ahead of the Paris Agreement. And then in 2021, we also joined the Climate Neutral Data Centre Pact which one of their targets is to be climate neutral by 2030. And in actual fact, AWS, we also have another target, which is to be um, climate, sorry, be 100% renewable energy. I have to get all these terminologies just right, because there's a lot of stats to fight this just in use. So 100% renewable energy by 2025. So as an AWS target, and we're well on track to do that. Um, now that's what we're doing, just a little bit about what we're doing. We could do a whole presentation on some of the reports, statistics, information that's available to our customers. But one thing in particular that I do want to mention that is, um, you, you guys are using it at Flagship, is something called the Carbon Footprint Tool. So the Carbon Footprint Tool, so it's all very well what Amazon are doing and we have a big responsibility around sustainability and to make this world a better place and it's actually one of our leadership principles as well. I'm happy to discuss that in, in more detail too um, if, if anybody wants to know more about that um, and also to share any reports with people. But how do you as a customer, how do you track your carbon footprint and one of the things that we've created is a carbon footprint tool is freely available to our customers. You can easily see in the dashboard what your carbon emissions are and um, using AWS, but also what you're saving if you were running on on-premise. So it gives you what your emissions are on AWS, and then it also gives you, if you were still running on-premise, what would those emissions be? So it's a really quick view, and it's only one part, and I do get the fact that in social housing, you've got a lot of reporting, we've got a lot of guidance to follow, and sustainability of new homes is a really big thing for social housing to report against and get right, and get the statistics. It's one little piece of the puzzle that hopefully we can help with. Brilliant. You're good yeah. to yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's fair to say that zero is a priority for flagship. Um, like all housing associations, the vast majority of that is the performance of the homes. Um, and that's where there's that's where the, the strategic focus is. And I like the asset management guys discuss that. But this is a good example of probably if I'm completely transparent a few years ago, it wasn't one of the drivers to move to the cloud. We had various other reasons to move to the cloud, but now we're there. We're getting loads of stuff from AWS on making us greener without us, us even doing anything. We're there for other reasons, and we're getting greener all the time, so it all adds up, and it's all, um, all adds up in a positive way. Yeah, and equally, from a different space perspective, we've also got similar targets, so, you know, as a, as a team, team, we're continually working together on yeah. the, same, the same side. And, and I think you're right, it's a continual um, piece of work, right? So, yeah. you know, everybody's forging ahead with this, put together and then car shops. Yeah. Brilliant. I think one of the things which I know um, Flagship is currently working, working on a number of partnerships, I think BPHA yeah. and Futures, yeah. that's yeah. currently in the planning yeah. phase. What would be really useful, you know, is, is how is that helping you on that journey? You know, will the, is the, having been on the cloud, yeah, helping in those in the, that exploration? Yeah, definitely. So it's um, yeah, early stages of partnership talks with um, BPHM Futures, but it's already clear we've got um, um, a lot of similar cultural values, which I think is important. So I think will align well with um, AWS and digital space in terms of the uh, maybe the softer side of things. Um, but also, as, as mentioned before, the cloud, the cloud, one of the main drivers for the cloud is the, um, the capacity. So if we, if we were to form a partnership and double in size, 
almost overnight, I've oversimplified the technical aspect, <laughs> but almost overnight, you can double in size, you've got the performance, you're not going to lose performance, you can get as big as you need to be, as quickly as possible, so yeah, it really opens up opportunities for growth and is one of the enablers for this sort of activity. Well, I think a great example, you mentioned the contact centre earlier, I mean, obviously that's 200 agents at the minute, that we've got customers on, a thousand, it can scale. You know, it's, it's pay per use really, so you can literally scale that infinite item really. And you're not having to go and build, uh, you know, a, yeah. a contact centre in the old world. You have to physically go and build yeah. that contact centre with everything. Not the technology. Well, I just suggest doing it in two and a half days again. Yeah. Can I just say? <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the things that obviously from a digital space perspective, it's been a fantastic journey and, and, a, and a great great partnership and great, great customer in, in my view. You know, we'd like more. You know, we'd like more to work with more. We work in a number of housing stations. Yeah. My group, we helped them migrate last year. Qualys, a lot smaller organisations have gone to our contact centres, work with lots of organisations. You know, there is an offer here. We'd like to help customers if you want to look under the bonnet and you know, understand, what, you know, what you can do. We have got a, you've got something on your seat, but we've got a, call it Discovery Light, so we'd happily work with you to work out what's possible. No cost involved. We're at the stand, you know, come and meet us. Um, I think really it'd be good one, before we wrap up, I'm conscious, I'd like to put some you know, questions to the audience. I believe there is a roving mic just, just coming into operation. Just please, you've got a real great opportunity. Yeah. You've got you know, someone that's been on the journey. <laughs> I know it's never easy to ask the first question, but if anyone would like to ask a question, including Dean in the corner over there, you know, please, please it's ask away. Like any, ask any, um, <laughs> any takers? <It's> too hard. <laughs> not, not you either, Tim. <laughs> anyone else? I mean... It's really, you know, I, I, please come and see us. Um, no, there's a lot of it's, it's too tricky. I'll be in the same position. Um, oh, oh, Dean's going to ask a question. Here we go. Dean from WHG, I believe. Yeah, so in retrospect, is there anything you'd do differently now than you would have done with a bit of board? Um, as I said, not have the side attack in the first instance. Um, difficult because it was really cyber attack kind of taking into account it was really quite a smooth yeah, migration it was yeah yeah um, we planned it really well yeah i don't i don't know if i would do anything different to last year so yeah, the thought that jumps into mind for me is we were due to start moving to cloud about a year before yeah that's a good point we were due to start moving to cloud about a year before that's when covid hit us all so we all we all clamped down on budgets clamped down on projects went to minimal service and looking back, that was probably one of the well, definitely one of the projects we should have carried on with. We would have had the savings. It would have been um, would have been a bit of work, but I mean hindsight hindsight's a wonderful thing. But I'd suggest if we'd done that move a year early, um, we probably wouldn't have had the impact of the cyber attack. We, you can't prove it wouldn't have happened anyway, but we would have been able to contain it better, I think, and be more resilient. So um, one my insight is powerful. One thing I take from that, and that is um, just get started. So don't wait, because you said earlier, no, don't no. wait for this big and compelling event for you know a big migration, the end of a call centre contract, whatever it might be. Just get started, do something. You'd have it, think big, start small is what we say. Get your hands on the technology, work with the partner like Digital Space to help you understand the technology, what that security best practice is, and just get started. So I think that's what I, I think that's what set us up. Yeah. I mean, we had that six month plan that we talked about before, and what enables us to move so quickly when the, I keep using the, I try to avoid the phrase, but when the cyber attack happened, but we'd already, the technical guys had already had loads of conversations, they were yeah. already comfortable with the AWS setup. What well, we'd essentially spaces. done the discovery we just mentioned yeah, there, exactly. we literally knew what we were doing. We'd, we'd, done, done, we had done, loads yeah. we'd already done loads of work with the boards, they understood how the risk, the risk environment changes. How it, improved, how it reduces risk in some areas, we need to manage risk in other areas. Everybody who's prepared, which is maybe not as quickly as we I think One of the things from memory, I think, what, and it differs with some organisations I do work with, I think you had real, you engaged your exec really early. Yes. Yeah, and I think that I think having that, because it's not just about, I'm conscious we have talked a lot about technology today, but it's, it's about how yeah. that, that organisation benefits and what is the, the longer term objective of the business and it's bringing that into that, 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 that project. Really, you know, yeah. the CEO, the Red Cross, director of housing, finance team, the finance director, yeah. in fact, I think the finance director in the end was quite instrumental with the change as well because he had been involved in those early workshops. He understood, understood cloud 
So when you did need more technology, you were saying, what's up with that phone project? Yeah. Where, where are yeah. we with that? Other so, people were asking for it. It yeah, wasn't just exactly. IT going, this is what we've got to do. Yeah. The business was saying, when is, when is it going to happen? When am I going to get my benefits and things like that? So, so um, it moved from sort of why are we doing it to when are we doing it? Yeah. yeah. Great question. Are there any other, any other well, questions? Any, <laughs> any, anyone got anything itching that they want to ask? No? Well, actually, if you feel like you want to ask a question, we've got to be on the stand. So just come over and find us. We've got some. Can I just ask a question? Yeah, please. Well, it's not really a question, it's an offer, really. Just to say, I'm genuinely interested, as everybody here is, to understand what your challenges are. So yeah. do come and talk. It's not just about what we do, but tell us what you're doing. Where are you in your journey? You know, particularly, you know, in particular for me around security and sustainability and also technology wise. You know, what are you doing as an organization and what are the biggest challenges your tenants are facing? Get us work with you and understand how we can work backwards to uncover and, and you know, rectify some of the challenges that you're facing. We want to hear from you. Yeah. So come and have a come and have a chat. So I think great for to kind of first Thank everybody here, oh, thank you. Andy, Laurie, Thanks, Simone. It's been a, been a joy, enjoyable. It's flown. Yep. Um, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for, for joining us, and, and please come and find us. We stand just up there on the right, past opposite the coffee. Come and have a sustainable beer with us. I think that would probably be one. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, have an enjoyable rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.